Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to Endless Space 2. If this is the first time you're hearing of this game, you might want to go watch the series that I just recorded over the weekend called Let's Learn Endless Space 2, where I come get to grips because come up to speed with the uh, basic mechanics. Uh, but if you're already familiar, we're just going to jump right in. So I set everything on random, but it's non-repeating random, so all eight of the game's races will be represented over the eight players here, we just won't know who's connected to what color. Uh, here's the rest of the game settings, and let's go. I've picked up some of the basic mechanics, I'm not really sure about how everything in the game works, and I don't have any good strategy yet, but this should be like a real game. We're gonna, we're gonna actually be able to play, now that I have some idea of how some things function. So let's see who we, uh, let's see who we pulled. They have always been first, the Sophons. First to split atoms. Mine asteroids. And capture the energy of the sun. First two to crash their test rockets. Trigger artificial earthquakes. Oh. And accidentally blow up their moon. Their great power has given them great irresponsibility. But through it, now. They're the first to create perfection. Me. Man, I really like the Masters music in this game. Sons. They have crammed the cold, rocky homeworld of Hekim with glittering metropolises and great works of engineering that proclaim their genius. As the newest member of the Triumvirate, you face a future full of risks and challenges. But hey, that's where the fun is. More great discoveries await you in the inky depths of space. That dude talks so slowly. All right, <clears throat> so far. So I don't know a lot about these guys. <laughs> Let's figure out what they do. We are the Democratic Union of SB. Apparently we started as a democracy with these guys. Okay. Uh, so we have Omniscience. A science bonus is given for discovering technologies based on how many players have already researched it. The fewer know it, the higher the reduction on the next research. Okay, so we want to research things that other people don't have. I presume there will be a way f uh, for us to tell. And of course, we have this. This tells us that our basic population unit is the Sophon. Uh, additionally, we have pilgrims on our home planet. This is one of the minor factions. We know the location of unexplored adjacent nodes. Our ships are really fast. Our infantry is not very good. And we started with some new. Yeah, we started with some tech. Okay. So, hold on. Let's let's get into our system here. So, Sophon population gives plus one science and an additional three if the world is cold. Pilgrims give plus two science and an additional three if the world has an anomaly, I think is how that's uh, meant to be read. So, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of very cold planets in this system. Alright, we should probably start out with drone networks and cerebral reality, I think. These are, you know, just good initial boost to our resource output, although plus five plus five isn't really, like, it's not that much of an improvement uh, percentage-wise. It's not quite as much of a blowout as, like, the early buildings in Endless Legend. But let's do this, at least. Get our most basic stuff built. And then have a look at our ships. So we started with the pretty standard, this is a settler, you can tell because it has a little flag icon. Seven movement, wow. And a scout ship with eight movement. Well, let's just go have a look, shall we? So we can see the location of the ad adjacent nodes. We know that this is really far away. So why don't we not go that way first? Let's see what's over here. We should be able to get close enough to this system to see that we cannot settle either of the worlds in it. 
that is a gas giant, or a gas large, I guess. And an Arctic. Okay. Worlds we do not yet have the colonization tech for. Uh, before we send our settler anywhere, we started with a hero. Is our hero a good ship hero? Let's have a look. So, the hero's a counselor. Counselor ship is heavily or oriented towards support modules with limited weapon and defense capabilities. Uh, well, you know what we could do is just send him out as a scout temporarily. We can upgrade his ship with some... Uh, Oh no, we can't afford to equip a single drone module, or a single probe module. He currently gives one science per population on planets. I mean, maybe we do just want to make him a governor? Well, no, even if we can't give him probes, it's probably still good to use him to scout. So let's create a, a fleet of him. And use that ship to help us figure out where we're going to settle. He only has six move. It's a total scrub. Uh, I think the settler ship is just gonna wait a minute until I feel until I know whether this is a settleable node or not. And we need to queue up a basic research. So let's have a look at the research tree. Okay. No empire has researched these technologies. Okay. So what do we want? We could pursue the um, the resource the researches that give us the ability to settle on other cold worlds. So Arctic is here, ice is here. This gives us steps. You know, it might be a really good idea to just um, focus on spreading out. In my game in the learning series, I was definitely too passive. Our home world does have access. Our home system does have access to both of these strategic resources, though. On a world that is colonizable, but not yet colonized. So I guess that's also, that makes an argument for um, researching the tech that lets us get those. We also might want to get uh, off-world agribusiness really early, because that gives us the ability to talk to minor factions. Well, we can't actually make use of these resource things until we've settled that planet. And that'll be a few turns. So why don't we pick up off-world agribusiness just in case we meet some some miners. I want to be able to negotiate. Uh, I want to be able to start negotiations with them as soon as possible. If we're if our ships are fast, that means we're going to see a lot of systems quickly, hopefully. And uh, I'd like to be able to deal with the people that we meet there. This is not a system at all. This is nebular clouds. So this node must be within your influence zone in order to benefit from its effects. The influence zone is this, like, colored circle around the system. Plus 25% extra experience on fleet, but half energy weapon damage for space battles that happen here. That's really interesting. So there's just, there's non-planet, or non-system nodes. I did not realize that that was a thing. Okay, well... All right, let's uh, let's pop these anomalies. We have some probes on our scout ship, so we can expend our probes to investigate the curiosities on the planet. We in investigated some ruins and found twenty Hyperium in them. Okay, that's not bad. And over here, we've discovered a basic pinch beam. Wow, a th a beam module that does thirty-one damage per second, but only works at short range. That's really interesting. Okay, this is just telling us about that nebula. Unfortunately, firing two probes uses up all your ship's movement. But you know what? At this point, let's just uh, let's just fan out. I'm not sure if it's a good thing or not that our uh, our actual system is sort of tucked away from everything else. I guess it'll be defensible, but it also means that we can't use it to sort of wall off um, our future settlements to make them safer. Okay, we found another thing that is not actually a system. An asteroid field. Plus 50 in, uh, industry on the system that gets a hold of it. So if we took this, uh, this system right here, it wouldn't be too hard to get it to expand its influence out here.
What is this? What is this system made up of? A steps planet. Okay, so we know we know we can colonize those pretty soon. An Arctic planet and an ice planet with ice ten. Uh, I don't exactly know what ice ten does, but I know ice nine wouldn't be a fun thing to find on a planet. So this can't be much better. Plus two science per population, but minus ten approval. Okay, that's not so bad. Well, this could be our settle. After we get off world agribusiness, we could just expand to that, uh, we should, could just next grab that tech that lets us settle step planets. That's probably what we'll do. But we'll keep looking around in the meantime. Ooh! This system has two planets I already can settle. We are Redfall. Uh-oh. come into your cosmos on a mission of survival. You met another player already? We passed them on the space lanes here. Okay, so Gobris actually, um, Gobris is a nice choke point. If we can take and fortify Gobris, that makes all of this stuff so much safer, because there's no outlets. We found Eridanus, which also has habitable planets. A talking world. Huh, we're going to have to investigate some of those anomalies, because those are some weird things. Dustciduous trees. And a big toxic ball of gas. What is, what is up with these? There's a continual series of radio wave transmissions from variable sites on the planet. Though they appear to be artificial and thus have some purpose, the transmitters have yet to be identified, and the code or language remains an unsolved mystery. This gives plus 20 approval on the planet, because I guess people really love number stations. This strange planet emits natural sound and magnetic waves that imitate musical frequencies. This is a weird planet. The approval on this planet is crazy high, though. Everybody wants to live here. Okay, we gotta we gotta get over here. I could just inhabit Eridanus. I think I really do want to um, pull my settler over here and get Gobris settled as quickly as possible, though. All all other things being equal, um, we probably should also move this guy to Gobris so that our settler has some defense because the detector does have some weapons and stuff on it. I'm not all that excited about meeting another player this early. Especially the Riftborn, who were, uh... No, they weren't that nice to us in the Let's Learn game. Alright, running an empire is a large, complex, time-consuming operation. This has been an inconvenient truth since the dawn of Sophonity. One of the few drawbacks to living in a civilization as cosmopolitan, prosperous, and brilliant as ours. One always finds oneself straining for the next yawn-inducing thing. People to meet, things to do, star systems to conquer. It's enough to make one hang up one's hoverboard. One solution to this problem was posed by Arar Neodim, ne, ne, Neodim, Neodim, sure, the proctor of future research at Rohab University. Why not get some of the stupider peoples to do it? Surely there's a sub sofan somewhere who actually enjoys this endless drudgery. But the extensive and immediate ridicule she received was sufficient to change her tune. Why not, she then posed acerbically, just get an AI to do it then? The genius of this idea could not be understated. Could not... could not... okay. I'm not 100% sure that that's what they meant to say. The movement gained immediate traction in the High Caucus. Budgets were allocated to the finest minds assigned to the project, and in a matter of months, the Enhanced Neuroflexible Entity Research Project was launched. Now, just a few short years later, we are ready for the final touches. Tighten the bolts and raise your receptacles, Sofans, with Enfer finally, finally... A golden age is upon us. So, we could militarize, inspire, or socialize. Teach Enfer, a newly constructed AI, how Sophons pick fights by winning three battles to get cheaper ship parts, I guess. Lowered production cost is nice. Uh, we could teach Enfer, a newly constructed AI, the basics of scientific exploration. Take your exploration fleets and orbit two systems in a different constellation. That's interesting. That would require us to do a little bit of research. Um, it's not immediately easy to get to a different constellation. Uh, when I say constellation, a constellation basically refers to this. Any shape that's connected by these, like, star lanes. You can get a tech that allows you to just navigate space uh, freely. And we would have to use that to... How do I... Yes, I want to make the choice. Here we go. 
Uh, or we could socialize. Raise your relationship with a minor civ to 90 or higher. Sophons can only do this using influence. Teach Enfer, a newly constructed AI, how to talk to strangers. Well, this sounds hard. This sounds like it would take a lot longer. This isn't so bad, really. Let's go ahead and do this. What's the reward for this? Seductory. Wow, that's a, that's a fantastic word. Can use luxury resources to bribe minor civilizations. I don't think that's all that useful, but uh, I think this is the goal we want to go for. Sometimes the lesser races get offended so easily, but with Enfer's infallible linguistic AI, the stresses of interspecies friendship will be a thing of the past. Alright. Now we just gotta find a minor sieve. Okay, so here's where, uh... That's actually a little bit awkward. We're gonna have to end up researching the free travel tech in order to even find a minor civilization, so that's unfortunate. Here we've discovered a black hole. I didn't see any of these, like, these nodes that you can't inhabit but that you can get benefits of by getting your influence around them uh, in the learning game. It's interesting that they appear to be so very common. All right, well, this dude's not doing anything of value anymore. We've figured out this whole area, so maybe I should reassign him to be a governor now. Oh, his uh, his assignment cooldown. Right, we need we need to wait four more turns before that's feasible. Okay, well, he probably should just come home. Let's not send him into enemy territory. They will not appreciate that. All right, uh, there's no curiosities to be found. So how long is it going to take us to get the ability to settle this planet? Four turns. No empire has researched this technology. All right, uh, so I guess our detector ship doesn't really need to wait here because we have the hero coming back to defend this thing. So let's just send the... Uh, the We'll send the detector ship back out here and have it check out these anomalies. Or these curiosities, rather. Some of which will turn out to be anomalies. This is an unusual start. Not really a lot of people to talk to, and like a really easy bottleneck to defend. Hi, Shadow. This is their exploration ship. Okay, it left the system already. It's probably poking around back here. Uh, you just wait. Just wait a few turns. Basic constructions are almost done at the capital. All right. Oh, I didn't do this yet. So yeah, a large desert, an arid. Okay, this is nice. There's a lot of. Uh, a lot of anomalies there. So we probably want to start by exploring the anomalies on the colonizable planets. Do I have... I do have both of my probes back. The ship generates, I think, a probe every two turns. Um, and you can replace the module that makes the probes to make it generate more or to have a higher, uh, a higher maximum stockpile and stuff. So we found some deciduous trees. That's pretty cool. And titanium. So this planet is loaded with resources. We need more settlers. Yeah, some quick expansion, uh, I think, is it's just the thing here. So I want you guys all to sit still. You used up all your movement. And we've gained some... Uh, I think we've gained some science from some of those exploitations. Because it looks like this is completing faster than I, than I remembered it was going to. All right, you're just going to stay put until you generate a couple more probes. So we have a fascinating turn of sitting perfectly still here. Okay, hold on. I'll uh, I'll decide on a new tech in a second. Let's first of all upgrade our hero. I think we are just going to turn him back into a governor, so he could give plus plus a lot of dust on our systems, plus a lot of science on our systems. No shock there. I mean, we might want to just, like, really lean into this science linear. If we can get ahead of people on research, we can stay ahead thanks to the research bonus. So maybe this is the way to go. 
Yeah, I guess we could have used the dust too. So how is how's your assignment cooldown? Well, it looks like he is not on cooldown anymore. So do we want to put him up in the new world? Or back in the uh, the old system? <clears throat> what is the, the thing we took? Is it plus science on planet or plus science on system? Okay, so it doesn't matter how many planets are in the system we put him in. Although we would like it to be a place with a higher population. So, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll make him the governor of Gonos. Alright, so he's providing a fair amount of extra science now. And we colonize Gobris. Wow. That is a hell of a beak. Alright, so the planet itself is not very good. It's diverse, it produces a lot of different kinds of resources, but it's not actually very good at any resource. It has tremendous strategic value, however. <laughs> so why don't we, uh, why don't we move our... Actually, we should move our scout ship back over here to protect the outpost. So when we, uh, when we put a settler down on a planet, he creates an outpost, not a colony. It will become a colony when enough food and stuff gets shipped to it from the, uh, from another one of our, our settlements. And we can accelerate that process by spending some resources, but unfortunately we don't really have these resources. Uh, you know what we do have, though, is a bunch of influence, and I should check and I should look at our government and see if we maybe want to lay down a new law. So our, sir, our government allows us to have three leading political parties. Currently we only have two, because there's only two parties in our whole system. It gives plus one approval on populations and plus one law slot on the Senate, so that we can have three laws instead of just two. And we have access to... Wow. A, a law that improves our movement even further. It seems unnecessary. Or plus two experience per turn on ships and plus 25% on heroes. The Mandatory Confession and Workplace Efficiency Decree. Wow. Uh, we could also lower our science for some approval. Increase our... Um, what do you call it? Increase our manpower capacity. And increase the amount of food that goes to creating manpower instead of creating... Uh, citizens, or we just tax the hell out of our people. What's our approval level right now? 60%. So we could lose quite a bit of approval without changing levels, uh, which means without taking a penalty. So you know what? I think I am, in fact, going to up the tax rate. Uh, and because that's a very basic law, it has no upkeep cost, but many laws will cost influence to keep running. Because uh, I really want to get our dust up so that we can, uh, we can do some things with it. Oh yeah, we should research a tech. Um, we have Arctic and Ice Planets here, and Arctic and Ice Planets back home, obviously. We could pick up Ice, and this gives a building that gives us a tremendous amount of science as long as we can keep our people happy. Uh, this will allow us to explore moons. I haven't seen what that does yet. We'd head this way and get snow planets and eventually arctic planets. And this gives a, a, a laboratory that gives a huge amount of science no matter what. Completely unconditionally. Uh, this is a deed. If we were to be the first to search 10 curiosities, we would get 200 science. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that that's not going to happen. We are currently ranked 6th in progress for that. This technology is specific to the Sophon's affinity. I don't think that's correct. Oh, you know what? I think there's a... Um, this part of it is. The Home and Hearth program, I think. Okay, well... What do I want to do? We probably do want to keep expanding. I'm a little worried that we might get our ass is kicked if I don't pick up some military tech at some point here. But let's keep working toward more colonization. So ice. Is ice one that we need? Ice is one that we need. Okay, let's pick up the ice ice colonization tech. Wave function control. Nine turns. 
It's a little bit higher in the tree, so, you know, more expensive. Once we have 150 dust, we definitely want to activate this. Uh, this will help our outpost colonize way faster. And after we've done that, we might consider cutting taxes back. We'll see. I think it's, yeah, it's not actually having any effect. It's not lowering our, uh, our approval enough to change the bonuses that we're getting. I'd really like it if you were not there. I think that could be arranged. Okay, we can put our ship into guard mode, and that will uh, prevent enemy ships from uh, entering and then immediately leaving orbit of this system, so it'll stop him from doing like what he did there where he just ran through. But I don't think I actually want to do that. I don't want to provoke a fight. I just want a ship with guns to be here until the outpost turns into a proper colony. So in the meantime, we can use our probes for something else. We can just take a probe and fire it off into space to reveal a bunch of stuff in this direction. It'll just move this way for five turns and show us everything that it gets near. Okay, we should be building stuff in the capital. You know what we should be building is uh, that. You don't need a settler to colonize a planet that's in a system you already control. You can just do this thing. You can see it creates like a little graphical effect between the two planets where like space elevatoring people from one world to another. And this world has all of our strategic resources, so pretty soon we're going to want to pick up the uh, strategic exploitation tech. This ship here is one of the uh, one of the food carrying ships that's helping our colony to become a real boy. All right, let's turn on this thing. Go from thirty-two turns to sixteen turns. Not bad. Yeah, I think we're going to be doing a little bit of sitting and waiting here. Slowly accumulating resources. We probably have another probe by now. May as well keep launching them. This is just a... Yeah, this is just a scout. I would be very annoyed if he ran behind me with a settler and settled into my nice little area. Okay, probes. Uh, not... Not incredible so far with the probes. Let's try shooting some this way. There's a pretty good chance that you'll reveal nothing, right? Space is mostly empty. Overwhelmingly so, I, I might even say. A new minor civilization discovered. The His Show. Okay, that's good for us. Uh, so, show me that. Aha! Revealed by the probe. So, we can make first contact by spending a little bit of influence, and then praise them, and this will start our relations with them climbing. All we have to do is get to 90, and we'll move our faction quest forward. Um, now, you can... Making another action will increase the value and reset the duration. So what we can do here is let this tick them up at 2 per turn for a while, and then hit praise again, and it will uh, do another... 10 turns of praising from that point, but it will also be like plus 4 per turn instead of plus 2. So the maximum value for your influence per point of relations is to wait until your praise is just about to run out and then pop a new one. So the Hisho are a modern and civilized peoples descended from avian DNA. A race of highly competitive tribal warriors, their history is one of bloodshed and various other types of bloodshed. Okay, so they're already aggressive, dangerous, militaristic... They don't have an easy star lane to us, I'm not too worried. I don't know that they're necessarily welcome in the civilization, but we can at least be friends. Alright, let's uh, let's create some science. You know what we need is more science. Right? Or do I want to make an incubator? Maybe I just want to go for like the super, super fast expand. Actually, you know what I want to go for? If you own a system, you can explore the curiosities in the system from this, uh, from the build menu by doing the thing I just did there. Let's do that. Let's reveal all the curiosities in this system and figure out, uh, figure out what we have access to. And also, sometimes you just get rewards. Okay, he doesn't have another probe yet. 
Oh, Delphinius has, uh, or Delphinus, rather, has some pretty good resources. Red Sang. And both of the strategics from the early game. Eleven more turns. Now, this thing... Okay. Uh, hold on, we'll deal with all that in a second. This thing, you can spend influence to increase migration by 100%. My thought was that that would, you know, speed up progress more. But it doesn't seem to have any effect on colonization. I'm not 100% sure what it does. Uh, it might be bugged, or it might be that the effect of it is just not obvious, and I don't I don't know what to look for. All right, well, let's deal with we got some pop-ups. First of all, there's an election coming soon. Uh, our people overwhelmingly support the Scientist Party. Uh, also, pacifists are gaining favor. And this, this stuff, the people's opinions, are based on my actions and the things that I've built. Everything that you can do has some sort of political impact. Um, exploring, exploring curiosities has increases the people's desire for scientist leaders. Uh, talking to minor factions and generally being chill with them. And even researching that tech, I think, gave us um, pacifist demand. So we'll see how it turns out. The election is turn 20. I'm not too concerned about it. There are heroes, and there are heroes. Legends of prowess, familiar to all, yet witnessed by none. The heroes of these tall tales are a dime a dozen. But in the leaders you have met, and in the murmurs of your crews and colleagues, there are stories of other heroes, living heroes, whose actions and efforts have changed the course of battles and bureaucracies, whose actions and decisions have been pivotal in the rise and fall of empires. And when one speaks of these heroes, masters of dust and its vast powers, one also speaks of the place where they studied, where they learned these feats of strength and genius. It is simply referred to as the Academy. Some seem to present it as a center of higher learning, while others mention it in tones more suitable to worship and epiphany. It would be good to know the truth of all this. It would be, it would be good if your ships were the first to make formal contact with it and meet its leader, shrouded in mystery. Okay, so the heroes of the galaxy. It says here, Masters of Dust. Dust is our currency, but it's a little bit more than that. Uh, if you play enough of the Endless Games, you start to glean things about the universe over time. And dust is used as currency because it's useful. What it actually is, basically, is... Uh, it's like a nanomachines. Little grains of dust are nanomachines. And they are semi sentient and self-replicating and stuff if you can figure out how to give them commands they can do basically anything if you've read nano machine based science fiction you kind of are familiar with this idea already um so if you're a master of dust if you figured out how to manipulate the nano machines into doing the things you want them to do you basically appear to be a wizard so essentially heroes are wizards and the academy is kind of like endless hogwarts so yeah, it seems to me like it would be a good idea to find that place. Backtrack the paths of heroes by exploring five atmospheric curiosities. This is a cooperative quest. It'll be done when, between the lot of us, all of the players, we have uh, explored five atmospheric curiosities. And somebody did one after this quest popped up, but before we read this. So uh, if we want to get in on this and score anything at all, we need to find some. So of the anomalies that we have in our pool here... Ah, we are already working on an atmospheric one. Here's another atmospheric one to put in the queue afterward. And can we... Do we have an atmospheric anomaly available to be probed? Or an atmospheric curiosity, rather. That is subterranean. It looks like the answer is no. Okay, well, the two that we're working on in the home sector will have to be good enough. Alright, and we're working on settling that new planet, or at least we will be... No, did I already? Yes, I already did. So it would be a good idea at this point to pick up Xenolinguistics and Plasma Metallurgy. Okay, this one will give us less of a bonus. So wait, maybe we want to do this in the other order? My understanding of this is that you get a bonus toward the next tech. Yeah, I think based on how many people had researched the one you just finished. So I think we want to do it this way. Get the larger bonus. Well, actually, change my mind again. 
Uh, by the time we finish researching this, this might have been researched by more people. So let's do it this way. Okay. How are we, how are we looking on this? We're going to have to uh, reapply this thing. Okay, we successfully uh, analyzed the atmospheric thing. All ships in the fleet have been granted plus 10 experience points. That's a shame because there were no ships in a fleet. We analyzed it from the, uh, the build menu, which means this is just wasted, I think. And we discovered a Komatiite Volcano, which gives plus four industry per citizen on the planet. That is fantastic. That is a wonderful anomaly. Also, for some reason, the description of it starts with the phrase, Dude, where's my silica? Okay, a legendary deed, yeah. We were not the first to search ten curiosities, no big surprise there. Alright, if we can get this done before too many other players search atmospheric things, we'll have two curiosities contributed to that quest, and I think that's very likely to put us in uh, into a place, in a, pl in a scoring position. In fact, it's guaranteed to put us in a scoring position. We'll have to be one of the top three, since five anomalies is what triggers the end of the event. Okay, we got our Xeno Linguistics. We're already working on the next thing. It looks like we will, in fact, be allowed to finish this before the end of the event. So that's very good for us. Five turns until this is a proper colony. How's our, um, how's our population growth doing? So we still just have two units of Sophons and one unit of Pilgrims here, and then another one here. In 47 turns, we'll have, birth we'll have birthed another population. We discovered Acid Rain. Wow, that's just really bad. That's really bad. Minus two industry and minus 20 approval. That was on Ganos 4. We did find 25 science, though, from studying the Acid Rain. Ganos 4, which of course is the one that is now colonizable. Well, you can um, you can remove many negative anomalies with technology, so we might be able to pull that off. Our praise is five more turns. Like I said, we probably want to wait until close to the end of the praise before we start a new one. Okay, we don't have access to any new laws, so there's no sense. I, I'm still happy with the laws we have. Yep, just sitting and waiting. That cooperative event's gonna end basically any minute now. One one anomaly had already been one such curiosity had already been searched when we were looking at it, and we just did two more. Oh, it looks like it will in fact be a colony before we need to refresh it. I'm not sure what it was that caused the uh, boy. I wish these guys weren't in my area. I don't want to go and fight with them. I don't necessarily want to be at war, but, uh... Ah, yes, okay. Election time. So... Who do I want to be the next party? We're not really using the religious laws. I'm gonna throw my official support behind the ecologists. They're at 10%. Um... Yeah, provides a small boost to the chosen party. Let's see how the votes turn out. Okay, no votes were cast for the ecologists, so our government remains scientists and pacifists, and they gain some XP for staying in the uh, staying in the leading parties in the Senate. And as they gain XP, they unlock additional laws. So let's see, did we uh, hold on? You hold on. Did we pop any new laws? We did the Dirty Hands Act. Counseling, Orientation, and Guided Schooling Program. Keeping a close hand on education and apprenticeship systems allows the Senate to funnel the Empire's human resources where they are most needed. Stronger and more efficient workforce. Yeah, I like it. So minus 20% system improvement cost. We are not going to be doing any system improvements yet, so this is not uh, meaningful yet. We might get on it later. And plus one resource from luxuries, and plus 10% dust on systems per luxury resource. Uh, we don't actually have a lot of luxuries yet, do we? Even though the objective has been fulfilled, your participation is too low for you to deserve any reward. 
Wait, there was a reward down to the top three, right? We we explored two atmospheric curiosities. Huh. That's strange. Maybe it checks at the end of every turn, and every other player who contributed got to three during the same turn? That seems extremely unlikely. But I guess it's not actually impossible. Alright, well now that there's a functional planet here, I feel okay. Or a functional... Uh, colony here. I feel okay running back to finish scanning all those curiosities over there. Okay, I do want to colonize that. Maybe we should set up drone networks and stuff first so that we actually have some uh, industry, because this planet really doesn't have any industry. Yeah, I'm pretty bummed about the way that quest happened. Oh, I should probably do research, yeah. So... We could go to Arctic... But maybe we should do a little something else. We should probably research food and industry buildings, really. Because we have some industry problems, and we have, uh, we could use some food as well. So this is economy and trade. Industry buildings are... where are they? Okay, yeah, they are over here. This would allow us to colonize ash planets leads to some industry stuff. Extreme atmospherics. So there's a lot of stuff that's related to getting extra resources out of the Earth, but you don't actually get access to a lot of extra industry until you're pretty deep in this tree. Although, because the scientific policy, or the scientific party, is our current dominant party, um, we actually get to research one era further up than we ordinarily would. This would take 13 turns, but it gives us access to a pretty good industry bonus. Although it also is so expensive, we might never actually be able to finish it. So there's not really any industry in the whole system. I was thinking maybe we can just expand to some planets and pick up some industry that way. We don't actually have a lot of industry available in the systems that we can inhabit. So I guess we do need industry buildings. Our manpower is decreasing. Not totally ideal. Alright, you know what, let's just go to Neural Robotics. Uh, we'll probably be the first ones to get it. I have a pretty good feeling about that. Okay, we're still... Working on the last curiosity here. And then we probably need to, you know, build some of this kind of stuff. Plus 10 per cold, per fertile, and per temperate. So all of our planets are cold. So this will give plus 10 per planet, which is, uh, I believe it only counts colonized planets. So at first it will be 30 from pl planets, plus 30 from cold. Yeah, so 60 industry will more than double the industry in the area. That is definitely the next thing we are doing. Okay. Oh, did I forget to... No, we still have a little bit of time on the praise. So next turn, I want to refresh it. Alright, let's explore... A... I guess there's only one curiosity left. We found some titanium and oh a, a titanium enhancer support module really increases projectile damage. That's interesting. I've never found one of these before. Okay, so we really want to make sure we have some titanium. And then we're basically out of move. So I'm just gonna shoot a probe off I don't know, this way. Seems like a fine use of our time. Does any place else have curiosities that need to be explored. Oh, it doesn't appear so. We're probably going to want that free space travel tech sooner rather than later, honestly. Oh, 
Okay, this turn we want to praise them. Alright, so 10 turns of plus 4 now. For not that much total... Um, not that much total influence spent. Oh. It was just... It was just nothing? Okay. It was just nothing. Weird. Uh, so let's... Well, let's finish. Let's let the Mega Indie Consultancy finish, and then we'll decide what else we want to build there. Speculators are buying up the Hyperion. Hmm. We don't have access to the marketplace yet, so that's not really useful information to me. We are now pulling Hyperium and, uh, and Titanium, so we could use those to construct some ships. We could have our plan be to just uh, to just out science green to the point that we can crush them with our superior ships. Oh, we got some kind of random event here. Mind Matters. A brilliant inventor from the Gonos system has created a wondrous piece of technology. A neural device that allows one to temporarily control thoughts, uh, the thoughts and actions of another. Yeah, I don't like, that should not exist. That's not good. Uh, <laughs> He only created one, and he apparently passed away shortly after testing it. We're going to destroy that. Um, I don't particularly need the militarists to be in power. Uh, plus 100% experience on heroes is, you know, it's not amazing. I would like approval and ecologist political ideology, though, because I do want to try to get the ecologists into power. They're going to help our population grow. Of the heart and, of harmony. and also, we, greet you. we met a guy who is a tree. That's cool. What's up, Tree Man? We accidentally probed his whole thing. What's uh, what's going on with all this? Okay, mousing over the weird yellow light doesn't help. So, it's wrapped up around something over here. It's possibly another world? And that's actually not him. That's the greenish-yellow player. I really... man. I need to get some... I need to get one of those mods that adds colors, because having a green and a yellow and a greenish yellow player in the game is going to get a little uh, a little awkward. Uh, do you have another probe available? Can we... Oh, okay, somebody just built the Endless Research Park in Endless World. Uh, it looks like we probably won't actually make it out here with the probe. In fact, this is a path that I tried to probe earlier. Well, I, this is a little silly, but I'm actually going to run him back over here now because I want to send out some probes from here and see if we can get a little more vision of what's going on. I think the Unfallen dudes are pretty peaceful, so they'll probably be okay neighbors. Let's send a probe out this way. See if we can't meet whoever this is. It seems like it's a little harder for people to get in on each other in this game, so meeting our neighbors early probably doesn't carry quite the amount of danger that it did in Endless Legend. Alright, uh... Man, some turns you just don't have a lot of interesting stuff to do. Alright, let's reveal what this is that he's got his uh, weird coral tendrils wrapped around. It looks a little bit like the coral from Prey. Okay, we're up to Cordial with the Hisho. This means that they are now giving us free stuff. 12 dust, 10 science, and 75 manpower. Cool. All right, unfortunately, just don't really have a lot to build right now. Sometimes when you hit end turn, it doesn't actually end the turn. I think I might be like clicking and then moving, so it thinks I'm trying to drag rather than clicking. Oh, this is one of those solar nebulas, so he's wrapped his... 
I guess the Unfallen can just grab Nebulas whenever he feels like it. He's a vine ship. He's an entwiner. Oh, these are vines? Not like literal vines, though, right? Because it's space? Man, maybe literal vines. Maybe he's actually building a, a giant network of plants. That's pretty weird. That's like a real weird thing to do. Well, okay. I mean, that's fine. I guess. I don't, doesn't really affect me. Just don't send those tendrils over here and we'll all, uh, we'll all just get along fine. Alright, we almost have our big industry buff, and then we can pump out a couple of settlers pretty quickly. Ah, uh, boy. Actually, you know what? This is not my problem. These guys down here, uh, good luck, tree man. Because those guys are called the Cravers. You don't really have to know anything else about them. That's... They're Cravers. That's what they do. Alright, well, I would really, really like to get something actually accomplished here before the end of the video. So can we uh, pump out a couple of settlers real quick and get some things done? Alright, what is this? Out of the blue, a new minor faction has abruptly moved onto one of your planets and have no intentions of leaving anytime soon. Whether they are friendly or not is yet to be discovered, but hopefully their intrusion won't be long. So two Calgaros have just shown up. That's actually fine. I need population. Oh, they showed up uh, down here in Gobris. Okay. Calgaros are fine. They like religion and being happy, and also they're like warrior monks, I guess. We can um, pull up a little, little bit better the image. Yeah, they're like warrior monks with four arms and... I don't know. They're weird dudes, but... Uh, but I'm actually really happy to have some more population. Because all of those per-population bonuses, you know, are basically no good if there's no people living in your empire. Alright, uh, what do I want to do with his probes now? Let's send him back over to Gobris and we can probe, like, around here. Sometimes there are... systems that are not connected to anything else by star lanes. And I think the probes are one of the primary ways that you find that stuff. Alright, our hero is slowly gaining XP. I mean, it's hard to imagine that this is wrong. Let's get a lot more science. Alright, and Gonos needs to produce us some incubators. Right, I need two right now. And then, yeah, another one when we, uh, when we learn to inhabit Arctic. What is this? Intergalactic peace has led to a price decrease for military ships. I'm sure that means buying and selling, not um, not their industry cost. Which is, a sh you know, it's a little bit of a shame. Oh, right, the, uh, the deciduous trees are on the one planet we can't yet get. And after, I mean, after we build the incubators, we should put up a colony on Gonos 4. So we're actually going to have a lot of planets pretty soon. Which will be a nice contrast to the uh, to the game in the Let's Learn, where I had basically no territory for the entire game. We're actually almost as big already. All right, let's send a probe out this way. Uh, this incubator. We should probably hit this one first. Since there's more worlds uh, available, we'll get our second colony going as quickly as possible. And you are just, I guess, chilling out. I mean, we can put the world, we can put the uh, area on guard. Okay, next turn we'll, uh, well, I guess we can praise again, because it actually looks like it doesn't... No, why did it go down to plus two per turn? Because even if it, uh, even if... Praising them didn't actually just start a new a new duration. Um, the old duration, the original praise should. No wait, we should just be at one praise now. Yeah, okay, so we'll just praise them again now. It won't make a difference. That's fine. 
It's not totally ideal, but it's fine. We just gotta get there, our relationship with them to 90. There's not a lot to it, unfortunately, since we can't actually go over there and, like, interact with them. Alright, we have some more ability to improve our industry. That is important. So, that being the case, why don't we... We could develop some food tech. We don't really have a lot of food, and it does produce extra food on cold planets. Our, uh, our manpower and our citizens, not exactly in a spectacular place. But maybe what we actually want to do is pick up multi-thread management so that we can use dust to rush the completion of things in the queue. Because we actually have pretty good dust now. I'd like to be able to use it for stuff. And we discovered a new minor faction. Deyu. Deyu Yivans is how I decided that was pronounced. Where are those guys? Actually, you should have just clicked the button that says... Okay. So, pretty far away. Pretty far away in a place that doesn't really matter. But... It's probably worth it to contact and praise them so that we can get, you know, these kinds of rewards out of them. Because it really it doesn't take a lot of effort to maintain this once you, once you get it originally. Right, do I have to wait for his... Oh no, I can end the turn while he's still animating. Alright, how many sectors am I allowed to have? I can have eight systems before it is a problem. There's been a noticeably increased birth rate in one of the systems of your empire, Gonos, that identifies as militarist and scientific. This trend is particularly strong among the Hiroshim. Why? Your advisors say it's a cultural response to the instability of galactic warfare. Um, plus one Hiroshim in Gonos? Did we have Hiroshim before? I don't think so, right? Yeah, that's a new kind of population. I guess there must have been some, just not enough to count as a full population unit. Well, I mean, I'm not upset about the fact that we're picking up lots of free population. That's really helping to offset the uh, the low food. All right, which which world do we want to settle first? We want food and industry first. That'll help us put together the settling force for the other world. Wow. It's really pretty. Plus, this world has lots of uh, luxury goods, and I'm really happy with the way this is starting. Okay, this is a fine time to use some dust. Twelve turns to the colony. That's okay. That's fine. Not exciting, but totally fine. All right, let's take Area Dennis too. All right, this is not a bad start, but we really do need to find more places to expand to. Because uh, we're going to run out of expansion room here pretty shortly. And I don't know that we can win the game with only this many worlds. Now what's up? The event Mind Matters has come to an end. Okay. So what is what is our approval right now? Uh, plus 10. I don't remember where the approval breakpoints are. Uh, the What approval actually does is it causes you to gain or lose food and influence. Um, high approval can offset some unfortunate food situations. Although, to be fair, this is only at minus 8 because we are sending 32 food per turn to the outpost. So actually, is it a good idea to wait until the outpost is finished colonizing before putting down another one? I'm not sure. I'm not going to. But, you know, it's an interesting question. Alright, so I feel like we have a pretty good view of a lot of the area around us. Let's send a probe out this way. Maybe we'll find something. Uh, I guess let's let's also see what's beyond these uh, these systems over here. We don't really have a lot else for our exploration ship to do until I until I manage to get the uh, free space drive, which maybe I should. Yeah, you know what? That'll be the next tech. So that is... Yes, I'm already working on it. It's down here. It's Baryonic Shielding. It also gives us the ability to colonize savannas. 
and sets our curiosity detection and expedition powers higher. Which is good, that'll reveal more curiosities and stuff. Two out of eight empires have researched this already. Okay. We're a little slow on the uptake on that one, I guess. So, ten more turns. Let's settle here and see if it changes the number of turns necessary for the other one. Because I don't actually know how this works. Okay, tiny Mediterranean outpost. It's adorable. Alright, we'll spend the dust here as well. I guess this is where all of our dust is going. And yeah, that has no effect at all. I cannot figure out what this is supposed to do. Anyway, 14 turns to the colony. And over here, still 10. What does food look like in Gonos? I might be, like, massacring Gonos. Oh no, it's not so bad. Oh, because... Right, because we have two places. This one's pulling food from Gobris instead. Okay, well that works out just fine, actually. Let's, uh, let's play out to the end of the next election. So, turn 41, before we, uh, before we call it a day here. So we've met a lot of players really quickly this game. It took a long time for me to meet players in my last game. Okay, that's something out there. I'm glad I was thorough with the probes. Okay, we actually have a lot of pretty equal representation. So the pacifists have a narrow lead over the scientists. We might want to keep the scientists in charge. Because I really like being able to research out of our tech area. Or out of our current tech era, rather. So let's, uh... Baryonic Shielding comes down this turn, we'll be able to move our scout ship out to Mizar. We probably need to build an actual military, though. We the first to have eight planets colonized. We actually were not that far off of it this time. Alright, travel through open space is significantly slower than travel through the space lanes, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, so we can pick up a lot of different things. You'll notice the fact that we don't have this tech doesn't prevent us from getting this tech. Um, the lines here don't represent requirement, they represent facilitating tech. So, if we had Eukaryotic Sap, Graviton Research would be cheaper, but we can still get it. Um, we also actually have access to the fourth science uh, ring here, but these things are so expensive, look at 5,000 science each, that I wonder if it would even be worth it to go after them. We might want to do it right after researching a tech that like nobody else has. Autonomous Materials gives us extra movement to reveals enables the use of wormholes. This is 1896, so that's 10 turns of tech, but uh, wormholes are pretty powerful. It's basically like a second set of space lanes. And we can get some, uh, some reduction in the anomaly penalties. Yeah, this seems reasonable to me. We're going to be extremely good at exploring, I'll tell you that. Alright, we're getting there. Uh, them, them passing 50 means they're giving us more stuff. So that's nice. How are we doing with these guys? We're basically spending all of our influence just on this stuff. It's probably worth it, though. I mean, it's definitely worth it for the first one, so we can get this done. Oh, there's another player over there. We'll be able to meet them soon enough. Actually, it looks like there's no star lane between Ying and whatever's here. Oh, maybe I can't tell? No, I can see Ying. I'd be able to see the end of it at Ying. So this might actually be isolated from the Cravers, at least for the time being. I guess we don't know who the players are who researched the, uh, the open space drive. It totally could have been them, right? Well, alright. Gonos has, uh... Oh, we've revealed a new... 
We revealed a new curiosity. I'd like to see what that is. So we've access to the Intergalactic Technology Center now. Minus 10% cost on technologies. Just on all technologies? Okay, that's not bad. And plus 10% science per system level. That feels pretty... It feels like it must be pretty good. 38 turns to build, though. Uh, we could get plus 3 industry per dude on Gonos 2, which is not amazing. We could specialize in industrial zones. Um, adjusting a planet's specialization doesn't really cost anything meaningful. There's no reason, really, to leave them unspecialized. So let's... This is the only specialization we've unlocked, so let's turn this on. It'll be a little bit of extra... It's not amazing for us, because we don't have any hot planets, but it'll be a little bit of extra industry. Uh, and every little bit matters. Industry is really important. Okay. So what are we at now? We're at four planets with two more coming already. Five, uh, I'm sorry. Four planets with three more coming in the near future. So yeah, I've expanded a lot more successfully this game. We're looking at nine turns on this colony and five turns on this one. All right, once we land at Mizar, I think I'm probably going to shoot a probe out this way and try to and meet this player. What did we discover? Antimatter. So a, uh, a fancier strategic that we don't yet have uses for. You've read the reports, and it looks like luxury resource generation across all your systems is exceeding expectations this year. You can already anticipate the response from your advisors, though. The industrialists will advise you to quietly shore up the Empire's economy with the extra goods, while the religious contingent will want you to make a big show of thanking the, guards for a, uh, thanking the gods rather, for a bountiful harvest. Uh... So the celebrate option reduces the cost of developing our systems. Uh, we... Can we do this yet? Hold on. Before I make this choice. Okay, hold on you. Stop popping stuff up. I gotta figure something out. So that is based on... Yeah, we could start uh, system development. So the way this works is we go to... I think it's here? Economy and Trade Technology Stage 3 not unlocked. What the hell was I just looking at? Oh, it's not actually unlocked. We can research stuff from it, but it, we didn't have we haven't actually unlocked it yet. So never mind. That makes this choice not this one. This choice really easy. Uh, because system development is not a thing we can even do yet, we just go this way and get plus two resources from our strategic deposits for ten turns. There, simple. Okay, what is this? One of the problems with having sophons in your empire is that the little eggheads seem to have a particular genius for goofing off. Hardly a week goes by without news of neurohopped Sofan youngsters rampaging through town, or explosions of increasingly exotic colors and smells bombarding your residential areas. Either these guys need to get, a, either these guys need to get a job, or you need to find a way to put them in their place. Uh, so we can, we can science up, or we can garrison them. Sorry, we can call in the garrison. Step up police efforts. So within ten turns, garrison at least two military ships. In each hangar, that would be tricky. But we would get Wapster as a reward. Huh. The expense is numerous, and the number of individual contracts to be negotiated is in the millions. But finally, a service is created that streams any form of entertainment to any receiving platform in any format anywhere for free. So just plus 20 approval everywhere? Well, I guess it's a system improvement. We'd have to build it. Or for Science Up, we can get Culture Jam Centers. Plus 50 science. Boy, this seems like the right one. For the next 10 turns, build only science-focused improvements. The quest will fail if a system in your empire completes construction on a ship or a non-scientific improvement. Okay, we can do that. So, this isn't an improvement, right? These are improvements. Yeah, this is a specialization. I'm allowed to do these. And then we'll, like, uh, we'll build public-private partnerships afterward. And optics research labs. And Gobris is not doing anything that even looks like an improvement. So, should be fine. It should be good. Alright, do we need to flush resources into these again? No, it does not look like we do. 
Uh, we should probably keep the praise rolling on these guys. So this... Uh, it's not quite going to get us to where we need to be, but it'll be closer. Alright, and now that we are orbiting a system, let's launch a probe in that direction. We have one point of movement left, so I guess start moving. Okay, let's see if this does indeed fail the quest. I think it shouldn't. Okay, I think I'm going to throw my official support behind the scientists. I would really like the scientists to remain in power. Being able to research things pretty much in the order that I would like is actually really helpful. Okay, it looks like four and four, and that is good for us because I think current uh, the current leadership breaks ties. And we've added the industrialists to the Senate. So we should probably look at our laws again. Now that our... Uh, now that our Senate is a little bit more entrenched. Ah, What happened? Some Sofan kids caught wind of the non-science construction programs and decided they had a better future elsewhere. Naturally, it started a movement. Hey, this wasn't an improvement. I was following the rules. Okay. Antimatter price increase. I don't know how long that's going to last, but we should try to take advantage of it if we can. Because we have a little bit of antimatter. I can sell it. So maybe we'll, uh, we'll research galactic commodities next. If it finishes quickly enough, we might be able to take advantage. Okay, this is interesting. So some ruins in a gas giant. A lava planet. A lava planet. A platform of wise? Hold on, I want to look at that one a little more closely. The world was once the greatest shipyard of the Concrete Endless. Of oh, the Concrete Endless. Okay. Uh, the skies above the planet darkened with the enormous space docks that worked day and night, building and repairing fleets. While much of the technology is lost, the platforms still provide both living space and planetary defense. So plus 500 defense capacity and two population slots. That's a really cool anomaly. And had a pelagic life. Yeah, this is a neat system. So, do we have a probe? I think I have one, right? Yeah, let's, um... Let's hit this one. Just pop some stuff open here. Plus 10 XP on my ship. Okay, we found some star logs. Good enough. We have explored 20% of the galaxy already. I definitely feel like I'm doing a little bit better this game. Hopefully, we will uh, continue to feel that way over the first several games of, uh, of Endless Space 2. So it looks like this might be a uh, constellation that's like completely disconnected from all the other players. So we might want to take this over. Alright, uh, we're working on our goals. Let's hit the Senate, because I will forget to do this if I don't do it right now. So what laws do we have available? We can have the new colony law, plus 25 approval for 5 turns when acquiring a new colony. This might be worth running, because we are about to have two new colonies pop, right? Uh, we've also gained access to plus approval for al alliances in peace. Uh, we might be able to make peace with some players, but I think new colonies are a really good idea. So, unfortunately, that's going to be pretty expensive in terms of influence, but uh, we don't need to keep it running for very long. Alright, and with that, I think we are done for this episode, so come back next time. Uh, I am expanding and taking over everything, and maybe, uh, maybe this is the beginning of the road to our first victory. We'll see you then.